So hello, Scott. Hello, Steph. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm excited about today's reveal, and I'm also excited about uh, having a good redemption. So thank you again for going live with me and being here to do this. And let's um, let's give a couple of minutes for people to join us before we really dive into it. Okay. I'm going to go grab my dress that I'm doing today. Um, maybe just for right now, you can say hello. And uh, if people are starting to join in, you can say like, what, what, what do they need to join us? And I'll, I'm going to be right back. Okay. Okay. Hi guys. Hi Lynette. Hey Greg, how are you? I can't thank you enough for that uh, tapestry. Holy cannoli. I love that thing so much. I'm going to hang it up here in just a little bit when I get done, when we get finished uh, here um, in a couple hours. And I'm going to hang it up by my die and uh, start a new uh, uh, wall, of, uh, wall of fame. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do tonight is uh, gl uh, Glitch Redemption. Um, I didn't really, I, I let Steph take the lead kind of on the glitch when I had done it uh, already two times. Um, and then since then, I've been doing them and I've uh, been getting some pretty good results out of it. And I'll show you a couple uh, uh, tricks that I've been doing um, to be getting a little better results that I like. Um, so what you will need um, is a shirt that's been um, uh, soaked in soda ash uh, for at least 20 minutes and then spun out. Um, with this one, uh, if you are using a dry shirt, you might struggle a little more than somebody that has a damp shirt um, that's even a little more... Um, on the wetter side than usual because my spin cycle um, it really dries the shirt out it really spins it out it's a 15 minute spin cycle uh, Steph told me uh, her uh, panda is a nine minute cycle and it really gets it dry so um, if you can stop it just a little bit early you probably get you'll have better uh, results when it comes to folding um, because when it's dry, it's not going to stay for you. Maybe, I mean, I can't say that because I haven't did it, but maybe if you iron it as you go, absolutely, it would you'd probably get really good results. But if you're doing it dry, you might want to have an iron on hand. That way you can iron the fleece. But, um, right. so, so have a shirt. You need a shirt that's spun out. Um, uh, uh, meter stick or a yard stick um, would be will be real nice if you have that um, and then uh, just a 12 inch roller if you have one of those um, some rubber bands and if you want um, the results that I've been getting I really appreciate using the Sanu um, so I'll show you how I'm laying, putting my Sanu on um, and how I'm laying my die. And uh, uh, so we'll see. We'll see All right. Happens. So it looks like we've got about 16 people in the house right now. So that's good. Yeah. Um, awesome. Awesome. So like Scott has been explaining, we're, we're doing a glitch redemption. So uh, need something to tie up like a shirt or dress, a tank top, doesn't matter, whatever you want to do, a ruler, if you're just joining in and miss what he was saying, a uh, yardstick, ruler, some sinew, rubber bands, you know, something like that, pre-soaked shirt or whatever, pre-soaked soda ash. And, um, and then we're going to get into it. And Scott's going to be the teacher today, sharing uh, his knowledge. He's been cranking these things out and they look amazing. So uh, this is a real, 
a real joy that we're going to have this knowledge given to us for free today, you guys. So pay attention and I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to be quiet today. I'm going to try to and let Scott, Scott teach us. So right now, let's, uh, let's go over the results from last week's uh, live, the X. So mine is on the left. Scott is on the right. And I am not so sure how I feel about either of these shirts, to be honest with you. <laughs> I love, I absolutely love yours. I think it's really cool. Uh, the X pattern on mine is kind of lost. Um, I see the X on yours perfectly. Mine, I can't, I'm having a hard time finding, you know, the actual X pattern. I mean, wouldn't you agree? It's kind of like the X. It's like, yeah, but it's its own thing. I really love the shading of it. And yeah. It looks three dimensional. Yeah. It's, it's definitely it's, psychedelic. <laughs> you used a lot of colors, man. I used 20 colors on this shirt. This is the first time I've used <laughs> that many colors on this kind of a project. I Well, I've never used 20 colors on any project. You know, on my geodes, I might step it up and go in a higher number of colors. But for like these regular type, you know, whatever type dyes. I've never done 20 colors at a time. So I was having fun. I was experimenting and going wild. And so I just, you know, this is what happens when you get a little loose and go a little crazy. It kind of looks insane. <laughs> now, I love your, yours because I see the purples and the greens. And I don't remember what colors you used, but. I used 10 colors and they were all colors that split. Yeah, so you you have also a lot going on in yours, um, yeah. but but the difference is, is I I see the X in yours that I don't I don't I don't know what this is an X pattern. I folded it exactly like Scott did his, but for whatever mm -hmm. reason, the color placement or something has given it a whole different look. Now. I don't love this shirt. I don't hate this shirt. I'm sure there's somebody out there that will look at this and go like, yep, that's right up my alley. Um, it's out of my comfort zone. Let's just put it that way. Now, if I hang it up and walk by it for a couple of weeks, I might start to look at it and see it in a whole different light. But right now I'm like, oh boy, what have I done? So that's the front of the shirt. And here are the sleeves. I think the sleeves look pretty cool. Um, you know, the elbow, like the elbow region sort of has this like little star look on it. So, I mean, I think that'll look good when it's on the body. Now I'm going to flip mine over to show the back. The back looks just like the front. And this is where the centering of the shirt comes in handy. The sleeve inside the other sleeve technique, the, the centering of the shirt. Um, it's a mirror image from left or from right to left it's the same and then you know if the saturation is darker on one side um the, uh, so like for instance if if you're putting your dye on the front side of the shirt up you know it might have brighter colors whereas the back might have uh, more muted colors but on this particular shirt it's equally as bright on the front and the back and i did not flip this shirt did you end up flipping yours Scott? Yeah. I, but I put a bunch of dye on it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and I think, you know, like you didn't flip it. And, you know, your saturation from top to bottom is... So you got to remember how it's folded. And if you've missed this video, uh, the live stream, go back to the last one and check it out um, so you can see how it was folded. Usually if you're going to have saturation issues, it's because it's four layers thick, but even like, I mean, I can see like your bottom has stronger saturation, but your top still has really good saturation. And then the front yeah. of yours is like perfect saturation. So the top, the, on Scott's shirt, the back top half is the very bottom that's in that gutter. It is the last to get the saturation. Am I correct on that? And 
and the die, you know, and so it's not as dark as let's say the front two folds. Yeah. So exactly. So yeah. And even still that very bottom layer, which is the back of Scott's shirt and the top of his shirt is what was down in the gutter. It still has amazing saturation. So you didn't need to flip it. I love no. your shirt. Mine, mine. I, this is the second ugliest shirt that I have ever made in my I, opinion. I don't. I, okay. I don't no, I mean, I just my my brain does not operate in this type of color world. But like I said, that doesn't mean that somebody's not going to come along and go like, "Yes, that is speaking to me, and I must have it." <laughs> the colors, the colors are just they're out of control. But, you know, it's cool. It's tie-dye. There is no, no right, no wrong. <sighs> okay. All righty. So that, that was last week's live, you guys. So now we're going to get into today's tutorial or live video. And we are going to revisit the glitch. And Scott is going to teach us what he has been learning over the last, what? couple weeks um because many of you are in the group so you you see his work and his stuff is turning out incredible so he's gonna he's gonna show us again what we're doing so get your pre-soaked shirt grab some sinew grab your rulers your yardsticks you know if you're gonna die along with us that's what you're gonna need I am going to be doing a dress just like um, Scott. Yep. And these dresses you can get at jiffy.com, jiffyshirts.com. Or they call them cover ups, but you guys, I mean, they're just, they're like little mini dresses. You know, they're not super long. They're, no, they're fun. They're fun to die. They're they're a nice, a nice lightweight, comfortable summertime um, shirt. Uh, they're Lat L A T Live and Tell brand, um, which I've done many of their T-shirts and other things. It's it's a good quality product. Yeah. So right now, what I'm working on is mine is all wrinkled up. I'm going to try to smooth out. Why sorry, is mine so wrinkled? Yours, like, God, yours is hardly even wrinkled. My God, mine is just full of wrinkles. Okay. So how many of you are tying up with us? How many of you saw uh, Greg's video today on his glitch? Boy, oh boy, did that thing turn out amazing. I really he like nailed that. it. I know he doesn't think so, but I do. I do too. And those greens and purples, you guys know, that, that stuff is right up my alley. Give me green and purple any day. I'm a happy girl. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to get Unless I take an iron to it, which I'm not going to do because the iron is not warmed up. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the wrinkles out. This is one wrinkled dress. Okay. All right. So. Oh, my hair actually looks pretty. I was looking at it in the mirror today thinking, oh, no, I got to put more dye on it. It's getting faded out already. But on camera, and I, this time I hate this color. It's like magenta galactica, you guys. I just I don't, I'm gonna make it like blue. I think next time, I'm, I'm not feeling this color. It doesn't work with my skin tone, although it does match my glasses. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna grab my yardstick. I'm assuming that's where we're going. And I'm yep. I'm I'm on a 20 Your second tip. delay behind Scott. So 
I'm always slower than he is, but I'm going to be extra slow because I have to watch what he's doing. And I've got that 20 second delay. So, okay. What are you doing, Scott? Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to actually center my shirt, but I'm going to find the center of my shirt. Straight up the, straight up the shirt. And uh, we're going to use that. And you know how like you follow a, uh, follow a line on a pleat, like an accordion fold, and keep that line straight. We're going to as our guide to keep our shirt or dress straight. All right. So, do you measure it so out, or do you find, find your find you like the good old fashioned way of folding the two corners together and then picking it up kind of way, or do you measure yeah. it? No, I just do. I just grab the bottom of my shirt and folded it up found my center yep just like that okay and uh um Mark and then got my center up at the top and then i'm going to draw a straight line connecting those lines those dots and then when we go to make our pleats um i'll just keep that line straight and that will help keep our dress or our shirt uh level all the way up Instead right. of sitting there making lines, a bunch of dots and measuring all up, you can uh, just draw a line up and it'll make more sense as we get going. Okay. So you find your center and then. Uh, all right. And I'll, I'll show you what's, what we'll do. And we're using washable markers for that, you guys. You definitely don't yeah. want to go at this with a permanent Sharpie marker. Um, yeah. You know, washable markers. I use the Crazy Art brand, but Crayola makes them. You can pick them up at Walmart, Amazon, you know, well, where, wherever you like to do your shopping. They're for kids, you know, washable. <laughs> We're grownups and we use them. So, I mean, like, how perfect does it have to be? Can it, you, we just want to cut you. I mean, because my. Really perfect because. Okay. I'm having to sneak we, we go up and make our pleats towards us. I'm thinking, yeah. See, I, I knew it. My my line is a whole inch off from where it needs to be. Like, literally, I don't know how that happened. It didn't look right when I did it. But from my top to my bottom is a complete inch off. So let me see. Let me try this again. I'll pick a different okay. color. Let's see, let's see. And then you guys, um, color-wise, Scott was saying that colors that split are, are a good way to try to go. So if you know of colors that you like that split, those are the colors that you want to choose. So if you guys want to have a hand in what I put on this dress, make your, make your uh, requests. I have pulled, I've pulled Timberwolf, Black Cherry, Wedgwood Blue. And then I've, then I also have pulled raspberry, blue violet, and spicy plum for uh, another option. So, don't make any sense together. Yeah. So neither of my lines is right down the middle of this dress. But okay. Well, that's the way. Maybe it's my glasses. I need to go to the eye doctor. I think my eyes are all okay. So I've got my, I've got a couple of lines drawn on here. I think, I think in, in general, they're going to keep me on track, whether they're in the right, or right. not. Right, so your, your shirt or dress isn't going to get all wonky on you. You know, at least it shouldn't. It'll stay, it'll stay relatively straight anyway. Okay. Okay. So you put, you put your, uh, your your meter or yardstick underneath you, underneath okay. your uh, dress, underneath right. your dress. Okay. And then go up about, I'd say about two widths of your. Um, so about two inches. Of your puller. Yeah. The yardstick about two is about inch an inch on the top of the yardstick. The top so of the yardstick. Each so the yardstick is one inch wide. So go one inch two inch and then right i started on right. on, then, on the three inch then 
You know what I mean? Right. Like, and then, yeah. Like, then pick the, pick so you, the target. You do, or, uh, hold on, hold on. I got a question. You, you said do two widths of the yardstick. So basically, two yardsticks flat on mine ends up being at the three inch mark. So, all right. That, that's fine. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Then lift your your uh, shirt up, grab on each center, on the center on each side, and pull it towards you a little bit. And it's going to crease up. The bottom is going to crease up on you. And you use your finger and run it down it, and it'll straighten it up. Bring that down, and just it'll be kind of right on top of your... your uh, I can't see the, the bottom, bottom of your dress. All I can see is like the top. Can you push it up a little bit? I know we have the 20 second delay, but I don't see any of the work you're actually doing. Okay. Yes, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and another thing you guys, um, it was brought to my attention that YouTube has done something weird with the comments. If you want to follow along in the comment section, up at the top, there's like a little triangle. If you click that and do, let's see, what does it say? Um, all all messages. Set it to all messages, and then you're 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 currently in the chat. I think Kelly is the one that that taught me that. Okay. All right, so you haven't done anything yet. You just... I just went ahead and pulled it up so that you can see. Oh, it. okay. All right. So now, okay. So, so let me ask you this. It. On on this first, uh, I don't know what to call it. The, I guess the first pleat. Should it, pleat, yeah. should it fit halfway on top, all the way on top, just be right next to it? Where where does that you know I've had all, I've had it all three ways and I don't really think it matters the first one. Okay. Been going up. Uh, but it goes past it if it lines right up with it. It's that fine. Okay. Okay. So all right. uh, I'll go on. Up. I'm gonna make my first. My first ruler fold, and to me, I, I want to say it wants to be, it's like almost halfway. So like if, if the first pleat was two inches wide, it's like, I guess like one inch over top of it. It like, it split the difference. Yeah, okay, mine, mine, looks, mine looks like yours so far, okay. My, so my my dress was sticking to my table, so I had to scrunch mine up, you guys, because it was flopping. Scott's got a really big table. Mine is only four feet wide. So I had to scrunch mine up because it was dragging on the table. I think having no drag is a good idea because you don't want to be wrestling your fabric. Okay. And then, and right. then shimmy. And then do the same. Shimmy the ruler. No, I was going to say shimmy the yardstick out and then what? Really smooth and, out your pleats. Like, yeah, press them smooth down. Smooth out your pleats and then do the exact same thing you just did. Go up about two inches and... and Roll up the ruler. Two. Or yeah. What, oh, oh. Yeah. It, that one it wanted to pull. It, 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 it pulled you. mine up. Like, it pulled my edges. So maybe I need to go up a little bit higher. And then you want to roll, like stand the yardstick up. Yep. And then the top, pull the top of the yardstick towards you and stand and then, it up. Yep. Pull it towards and me. Then roll it towards you. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's looking pretty and then good. Keep doing the same thing all the way up. Okay. All right. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. And then shimmy. if you go up too far. You can kind of go up to the top of your dress or shirt and pull it, you know, push it up and you can start over. Um, I like to keep about a one inch gap. If that's not enough, if I make my pleat and it's not enough, then I just use my ruler and pull, pull it up until the way I, to where really where I want it. 
and then lay it down. You can do that with your uh, with your line too to keep your line straight. And then uh, tamp it down with your hand. Tamp it down with your hand and just continue doing it. Go up a couple inches. I think I'm having PTSD. Like I think I'm making my pleats way wider than I did last time. Like last time they were so thick I couldn't do like the third step. And now I feel like yes. mine are like even bigger than they were last time. But I'm going to go with it because we'll see what happens. I mean, yours look a lot way closer together yeah, than I, mine I do. Have, but uh, hey. I, I have about an inch gap. Mine is. In between each. Maybe a little. Let me back. see. Hey. But these, can you, will you uh, measure? Oh, where's my thing? My pleats are big. My pleat is one and a half inches. Can you see mine? Do they look too big? Well. Or almost one and three quarters on that one. Like, I mean, because I can see the under, I can see the underline, you know, like I can see. Okay, so the top pleat, my, uh, basically my ruler is one inch. Is your ruler one inch? Yeah, the, yeah. all the yardsticks are one inch. I've had so many people okay. tell me on my wig wag, like, you know that's an inch. Well, I, I know it now, you guys. I really did learn. Okay, but so okay, you... Okay, so have... really, my, each I think... pleat from... from uh, each pleat is basically a half an inch, a gap in between each one. Okay, so yeah, mine are like twice as big as yours. Should I, should I just start over right now? It wouldn't hurt. God's is it not really as wide. I mean, you're only three, three inches. Greg, Greg says your yardstick's not as wide as mine. I thought all yardsticks were just one inch wide. I mean, That's I thought that was like is. standard American, you know, measurement. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to start over real quick. So when I was yeah, talking with Bo, when I was talking with Bo about this, I was looking at our like Venetian blinds or whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called. You know, like the mini blinds in the window. And he was like, you know, that those might be good pleating tools. Like, how can we figure out how to make that into a pleating tool? And, you know, there's got to be somebody out there in the universe that knows how to, like, make some type of machine that will pleat for us. Wouldn't that be awesome, you guys, like, to not have to pleat anymore? We can just, like, put it into a machine and it goes pleat, 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 and then it's done. Oh, I hate it. I can't stand it. It's the worst thing ever. I cannot stand pleating. I hate pleating. Uh, that's why I make so many spirals because they're quick. I just want to get into the ice cubes. I just like, let me, let me play in the colors. That's all I care about. So, hey, Scott, has okay. Kelly, has Kelly joined us? Yeah, Kelly's down here. Hi. Hey, Kelly. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. I still uh, tried one of these monsters. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm rethinking it right now. <laughs> For you. <laughs> I'm in it, though. We're doing it. My yeah. I, I mean, I so can I'm see that. Basically, I'm just moving it up. Mine, mine is now... Mine are looking a lot better. So I'm just kind of, I'm shimmying it up. I roll it up and then I can decide how far do I want to bring that fat? Like how much do I want to overlap it? And I'm making it look a lot closer now than I did a minute ago. So, so I mean, look at my, look at mine now. It looks better than it did. You know, honestly, you guys, I make this look a lot harder than it is. These actually really aren't hard because the ruler is doing most of the work, really. 
it's not like the double fan fold where you have to really like pay attention to your height and you know like the ruler is really kind of doing all the work for us i think anyways like i think if once oh. it, if this turns out i might be able to do these all the time because the ruler's doing the pleating for me i'm just kind of rolling it and my line is getting a little bit wonky here and there. It's not as perfect as it once was, but I think it's going to be okay. So I told Scott earlier, I found the original post from like six weeks ago, or maybe it was even six months ago, uh, the first uh, glitch that I ever saw. I had no idea what people were talking about. And... Tell me again who you think is the originator of this. I thought it was Benjamin Bianski or Bianski. Benjamin okay. Bianski. I wish that's I, could who I that's who I thought originated it. And and he made a like a pick tutorial. I think it was like the friend friendly tie-dye group. And I think he made it specifically for Margot Farnsworth. And he did a pictorial, like a step-by-step. -step. And I just want to make sure that we're giving credit where credit is due. Um, you know, if, he, if he's the originator of this, and if he sees this, I want him to know that um, he's extremely talented. Do you guys remember the Stefron that I made? Um, I... The Steph Ron comes from from him. Mine didn't turn out anything like his. Uh, the tessellation folds that it, it's like it, mine looked like a chevron, and I don't remember who said it. I think it might have been uh, it's like Mark or Scott, but he's like, no, it's not a chevron. It's a Steph Ron. I'm like, heck yeah, it is. It's a Steph Ron. <laughs> Because it's it's my isms. What Kelly? Shabori book. He has pictures of glitches from twenty sixteen. Oh sh. Okay. Well, hey, uh, send it's send mystery. me. Send me like send me a link like uh you you can do like on Facebook Messenger or whatever because I would I mean I would love to see it. The more knowledge I have the more I can learn and the more I can bring to everybody. Okay, now I'm at the top. And yes. should I just leave that? That Me top too. part, instead of trying to fold it over, mine is about, oh gosh, about two inches in some parts, two and a half in others. Should I try to fold it again yes. or just leave it? I mean, can you see it now? It should be the, the 20 second delay. I'm concerned that if I try to fold it anymore, then when we start to go the other way, it's gonna make it so thick. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I can get, no. I mean, if I try to go for another fold, it's yeah. it'll be a half fold. All I'm right, leave so it. I forgot to I forgot to mention. Do you have a PVC pipe or anything you can kind of flatten it down with? Because um, that's what I've been doing. also uh, either with PVC pipe or I have a roll of contact paper, and I've been using it to um, to well, I've got, flatten it. Down. I've got my hands. Do that. So you're saying like really just mash those pleats in. And I suppose like right now, I mean, I could iron it, but I'd have to go heat the iron up. Well, you, I would, would you not burn your shirt if it's damp? Well, if I set it on a low okay. setting, hey, oh, okay. not, I don't want to get off topic, but I do want to show you guys something. I mean, since we're talking about it, this has been my, my greatest purchase in a, a recent time. It is a Panasonic and it is a cordless iron. So you have to plug it in obviously, but the cord is retractable. So you can retract it in. 
And then the iron, so see, like, I could heat it up, and right now I could completely iron this with no cord, no issue. Um, I don't have a link down below for it yet. I'll have to put one down there, but I love this thing. I know Stephen Jay uses a cordless one, so I'm totally copying him. Um, but yeah, Panasonic on Amazon. Here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll just leave it here. It's the Panasonic NIWL 600. It's got steam and all of that. I'm telling you what, not having that cord, you guys. Oh, I've spent my whole life trying not to iron clothes. And then I picked the one hobby where everything needs to be ironed. Urgh. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right, now we're moving on. Okay. So I I smooshed it as flat as I think I can get it. Okay. I, mean, I, so I pressed now... it in. On the side that I hold my hand on one side and go and put my ruler up underneath and go back. Okay, I can't walk around my table, so I, I have to I have to twist my work. Okay. So I have to twist it because I my my setup. So now I'm twisting it. So we just went, uh, what we just went horizontal, and now I yep. get if now this would be. Wait a minute. No, we went vertical. Now we're going horizontal. Mine is twisted just because That's I right. can't. Like I just said, I can't walk around. And now I'm switching to a right, twelve-inch right. ruler um, because my yardstick bumps my equipment for recording. So I'm going to switch now uh, right. to this, and we basically do what? The same exact thing? The exact same thing going up. So put your ruler up underneath it um, and pick it up and make your pleat without because it's kind of heavy. Okay. And just kind of lay the lay the roller down on itself and make it make your first pleat. Your first pleat's usually the not the easiest pleat when you're going this way. Okay, so I'm watching. I'm watching because you. It's kind of stuck to the. What's that? No, I said I'm I'm watching you. I because I have to let you do yeah. it, and then okay, I just saw your 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 uh, your ruler go up. So you did kind of do the same thing though. You you shimmied up a couple of inches, and then. Stood it up, yeah. and but you said yep. don't pull it or do pull it. Don't pull it. Just kind of roll the roll roll the roller down, and I mean if you want to, you can sure. Okay. But I that's how I do my first couple pleats, just because the shirt's heavy and it's kind of stuck to the table a little bit. Yeah. Unless you roll, put your uh, roller. A lot of times I put my roller underneath my shirt and. Uh, Move it up and down underneath the shirt just to get air underneath it. So that way it's not really stuck to the table. So just do the same thing that you've been doing um, on before. Kind of grab. You might have to grab your pleats so that they don't all come apart. Grab the top of your roller. Oh, I. You know and, what? I'm. I'm, I'm going to have to. I rummaged through the house and I found this ruler, but it's wood. And I think it's starting to get a little damp from the moisture in the shirt. That, and it does not want to let go. I'm going to have to go get like a little plastic one in the, like the, the, you know, like the school, like for kids, like a little plastic yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. But same thing. So I'm rolling it up. I'm grabbing my pleats and I'm yep. pinching them around that ruler. I'm pinching them, pinching them. So they kind of hold it as best as you can. Make it. Yeah, it does not want to let go of this. But do that and pinch it. 
like you said. So because it's not letting go of my my wood, I'm I'm like holding down the pleat as I shimmy it out. You know, I got gotcha. I'm a oh come on. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it with this thing. Like, what is it snag? It's like snagging it. I'm still. Well, the problem with me is my yardstick being so big, like what you can't see off camera is I've got everything over here and then I've got my uh, camera equipment over here and it bashes. And, and so I just, I don't have the space for this direction to have the yardstick going. It, it literally is running directly into my camera equipment. So I'm going to, I'm going to make the most of it, but I think I'm getting there. I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. So I'm pinching, pinching, yeah, you, pinching. You start, the more you do it. Yeah. And I'm rolling. Now I don't, I don't think I'm having these pleats overlap as much. They're almost kind of right at the tail end of the pleat before it. Is that okay? Me too. Me too. I, okay. I keep, yeah, I keep more of a, a, about the same as what you're saying. Yeah. They're they're not it's not splitting down the half of it like it was now. They're almost like right I I don't know. I can't explain it, but you you'll know it when you're doing it what I'm talking about. Like they're they're budding yeah. up to each other instead of overlapping. Yeah. Yeah, they Come butt on. up to each other, right. but then when you when you look at it the right way, they all look uniform. Well, mine's just getting a little, a little bit, nature. but mine's starting to kind of do a little bit of a, I mean, yeah, they're all in line. I think they're good enough. I'm not, I can't get too, if I try to get too perfect with it, which my type A personality will do to me, um, I might have to throw it against the wall, which I don't want to do. So... I'm bringing it up. I'm pinching all those pleats so they stay together, and I'm just I'm bringing it right up, basically to the, the next fold. I said it last time. It, it reminds me of like uh, making fancy bread or basket weaving or something like that. It's like I don't know. Of course, Scott is almost done. I am nowhere near being done. Yeah. Next time we do this, you guys, I'm going to have a different ruler. This is sucking big time. It won't, it doesn't want to come out. I don't know what it's grabbing onto, but it, it's really not good. Okay. All right coming up. Now, you guys, since we're not talking, we're focusing, I want to say a couple of things. So um, I'm here to support all of you. All, I mean, every single one of you. If you guys have Instagram, TikTok, YouTube channels, I don't know it. I don't have enough time to spend searching out everybody's stuff. So you know, if, if you have those things, you, you've got to let me know. You've got to send me a message, you know, something saying, I, this is my, this is who I am. You know, I'm following you. Could you please follow me back? Of course I will. And same, same with Scott, you know, um, I just, I don't know. And also like, we all have stage names, you know, my name is Steph. I'm not Belladonna. So like, I don't, I don't know. If you're, if you're using a different name on Facebook than you use on your Instagram account, I have no idea who you are. And then if you follow me and you have one of those pages on Instagram that is set to private, you know, unless you tell me it's you, I'm not, I can't follow you back because I have no idea who you are. So please, I want to support you like you support me. Just tell me and I'll do it. Okay. Okay, so I, I think that's as far as I can go. I don't even think I can get this last one to, to do it. If I try, it's going to be like a half pleat. I think I'm just going to leave it. Okay, 
So it looks should look just like a little baby. Yeah, it's cute. It, it, it's definitely smaller than it once was. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we go diagonal. Now we go diagonal. All right. So it's not as hard as it, it is. Now you don't have to use the ruler if you don't want to. Um, you, now all it is is an accordion pleat. Thank you. All Lee. we're doing is an accordion. Yep. Just like okay. that. So, so for instance, like I don't, we're not trying to roll the pleats over top of each other anymore. We just want to scrunch it into that's right. good old fashioned accordion pleat. I think that's, that's right. where the last time I was having a lot of problems is I was trying to roll it even more right. on top of itself. I think that's a lot of what people are doing. I think they're still wanting to use their roller and wanting to roll it. Kind of like a so uh, I just I just drew a line that way I can kind of follow my line. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. I'll do that too. Okay. So and, and then I'll wait for you to get your line up on there. Okay. And, and then we'll just accordion pleat that line. Just to pleat it as good as you can. The, the whole shirt comes into play. So if you make your pleat two inches, then your shirt's going to be two inches thick. Um, my shirt is three eighths of an inch thick. It's not even a half an inch thick. I mean, it's it's thin. Uh, it's one centimeter. Oh, uh, let me get let me get my my little ruler out here. Yeah, mine is only, mine's a quarter oh, yeah. inch tall at the very center. So it's, I mean, it's yeah, thick because it's all the layers thick, but it's, I mean, it's, it's not, it's about a quarter no. inch tall or right. Yeah, or, or right around there. Sure. Okay. So, so, so basically, we'll just make a simple a pleat that's probably about a half inch, nothing major. Now, if you don't want it real wide, then make tall. to measure that um my first pleat is um right a little past three quarters of an inch close to an inch tall okay so i i tried because like again i'm behind you so like i got my corner then i got my first my first layer second layer like, do you grab up just the first yeah. and the second, or do you go all the way three in or four in? Like, I guess that's what you're saying about how tall do you want it? Yeah. I, so I'm going to keep all my pleats that tall. So they're going to be, all my pleats are going to be about an inch tall. Okay. Yeah. And when you go to make, start making your second and third pleat, it's going to be kind of wide. So, so make your pleat all the way across. You know what this reminds me of is kind of like making a ripple, which are also not, not hard, but also kind of not easy at the same time. It's just a matter of gripping up that fabric and making it. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I was really having. A just to kind of show, show everybody how it's already starting to look. Yeah, Ready has its pattern going. I just think I lost the whole layer of pleat. Damn it. Okay. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, you make it look so pretty. <laughs> Yikes. All right. 
Like for mine, it's like it only wants to grab the first two pleats and then do I need to go further? I'm losing it. Just like I did last time, it's doing the same thing to me. Okay. All right. I think I'm I'm just I'm I'm manhandling it, you guys. I'm just taking everything I've got and just squishing it, basically. And uh, if you ha if you start getting to where it no, I think that's as good as I'm going to be able to get it in the center, anyways. Now, I mean, I'm not; it's not perfect. I mean, Scott's looks far more perfect than mine does, but okay, this is where. So last time you guys, and go back if you didn't see it, I used um, rubber bands. This time we're using sinew. And yeah. I'm using my- Yeah, but I'm gonna use rubber, rubber bands to keep it together. Oh, okay. So hold it in place with rubber bands, okay. Um, and go into, you guys, you there, would there laugh you you I saw ahead. my pile of rubber bands next to the sink. I haven't, I, I, I'm, haven't put them away and I don't want to put them away. I, I hate putting away my rubber bands. Um, so we're using rubber bands as a temporary placeholder until we can get our sinew on there. Okay. And I take like, I take like 10, 12. And just wrap them around my first three fingers. Doing that instead of sitting there having to keep. What off? Well, that's a good tip. I'm in my hodgepodge container. So if I knew which, which rubber bands, I, like if I. If I was using my second favorite rubber bands for that, that's a good tip. But right now I'm in my hodgepodge and there are so many various uh, sizes that I, I don't even know what I'm grabbing. I'm not too mad at this though, you guys. I think it's looking pretty, pretty good. I mean, I think yeah. I see each uh, pleat. I've got one, two, three, four, five now on this diagonal. I think Scott has more, but... um. But I mean, I can see it better than I did last time. Okay, so I feel like I've got it secure enough to where I can do my sinew work. And I'm using my sinew puller and matching caddy set from Jen and John, which you can find these at www.boredomwithjen.com. Um, it They're amazing. And I have videos on what this tool is if you're brand new to tie dyeing and don't have any idea what I'm talking about, sinew is a wax covered string that resists the dye. So when you use sinew, you're going to um, achieve white lines in your project. And that's what we're looking for in this one. We wanna create some contrast with the white lines. And using a sinew puller is a great tool. Now you can use whatever you want, you can use a uh, the handle of a wooden spoon, whatever you want to do. Um, but the, the real gem of this system is the caddy because it winds your sinew puller in less than a minute. So um, check out uh, boredomwithjen.com. There is a link down below in the description box if you want to click on it. Uh, it'll take you right to her uh, webpage. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll raise mine up too. I mean, mine's a little closer than yours, but I, I can kind of, I can see, yeah, mine definitely doesn't look as good as yours, but this is, this is my second one, but I can, I, I have, you know, it reminds me of the terracotta, the terracotta roof tiles. That's exactly what it looks like. That looks, look how much better that looks than your first, I mean, not that you, yeah, you know, no, it looks way better. It gets way easier better. as you as you do yeah i feel much more confident this time around than i did last time absolutely because you ended up taking it apart i think you know. 
Oh, I, I, yeah, I redid it a couple of times while we were live. It was, it was really difficult for me. But okay. When you're doing something live for your first time. Well, and like, the first time. But you know what? I accept the challenge. And, yeah, yeah. I, I saw... I saw a lot of comments on social media where all of you were really sweet. You're like, oh, poor Steph. She really struggled. Yeah, I did. I admit it. <laughs> it was hard. Uh, it's but, not an easy thing to do. But it I want to reassure you that this time I'm much more confident with it. So I know not I saw a lot of you. I saw a lot of you say, like, I'm never going to try that again. Please try it again. Please don't give up. I mean, yeah. Let's see how this one turns out. Now, if this one turns out terrible, I might give up. But I have I, I have faith. So please don't give up. Try it. Try it one more time. Okay. Now with the sinew, just start. Just now. Do are we tying it um, straight across? Are we doing it like in a mandala fold? What are we doing with the sinew? Leave two inch gaps and just go vertical with them. Uh, let's leave. Uh, let's. I just kind of eyeball it. I don't you know, marking anything out. I'm just kind of eyeballing. Okay. And for me, I have to always get it going. Wrap, wrap it's not it. I'm I'm so ambidextrous. I don't like. Am I gonna for me? Am I gonna continue to tie from the left to the right, or am I gonna want to go? I, I have a hard time getting started because I'm I'm really I'm left-handed, so is Scott, but I'm also extremely ambidextrous. So I have to do what feels comfortable, and I think I'm gonna start from the left and work my way to the right. So what I do with my sinew is I wrap it That's around a couple of times. Now, how tight do we pull? Like really tight, like regular? Like, like geo? Are we pulling the sinew tight, like geo tight or? Okay. So what I like to do is I like to get started. I like, to, when I start my sinew, I wrap it around two or three times and I pull it tight. Um, Scott, why don't you explain your sinew method because you do it very differently than I do. I here with these glitches, just a little bit on the thicker side. And it seems like the bottom corner up to the top and wrap two or three times and then pull it. Um, that line wants to get tight. This line right here. Three, the glitch is three times. And give it a good pull. Don't pull so tight that you punch yourself in the gut because it doesn't feel No, tight. it feels terrible. And, and the, the new pullers will hit you on your side, man. That, Scott also starts his with a cinch knot, and I don't. So he starts it off right. with a cinch knot, and I, I, I don't, and it, it doesn't matter either way. It just no, it as long as you get all. it started, um, it's good. And now, are you are you wanting the sinew lines to be clean? Like, do you want the sinew lines to overlap on the front and the back and be a nice clean line, or is this yes. like a geo? And uh, and it will kind of add the sparkle look to it. Okay. And you said how far apart? As well as Tell me one more time how far apart you said, Scott. I missed how far apart was the distance. Yeah, one inch, inch two inch. To two inches. One and a half to yeah. two. Okay, I did that one, I think, too close. I think I'm at, yeah, this one's at only one inch. So I'm going to move mine down just a little bit. Move it like one and a half. Let's see where that's going to fall. So that is, that's about two inches. You think that's okay, two inches? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so that was my like first. 
my second wrap, my third wrap, and now I'm going to pull it tight. I feel like I'm sitting in a glitch factory. <laughs> <laughs> you are, Emily. Where I look. Glitches yeah, everywhere. I've been, uh, I've been doing, I did four last night. Well, yeah. So, yeah, you really are in a glitch factory. Um, I am. I'm literally sitting in a glitch factory right now. <laughs> Well, I mean, his his, uh, his glitches have been turning out amazing. So you're lucky you got the first one. Okay, so after yeah, you wrap it the, the three right. times, do you do you thicken up your line, or is three thick enough? Or I mean, how how many times do you wrap it, Scott? I know. Okay, so we're not trying to make a massive thick white line. Okay. Okay. So for me, there there was uh, one, two. Oh, I'm not sure if that was three or not. I like to put my finger up underneath it for my slack line. Yeah. I'm pulling it nice and tight, like really tight, and you can feel it catch on itself really tight and then i'm going to wrap it again a couple more times and i'm going to pull it really tight and i'm i kind of press my hand down on the project and pull real tight oh okay and i'm as i'm working i'm i'm moving my rubber bands down off the project okay here we go to go again scott's probably already done with this sinew wrap let me see no, if I can, let me see if I can catch up. One, two, three. Three just seems to be the magic number. I'm going to put my finger up underneath that slack line. And the reason I do that, you guys, is because of it that the slack line is really tight. You could create a white line from here to there. On this pattern, I don't know. It might not matter having a slack line, but there are some patterns where you don't want to have a line from, you know, line to line. Pull, 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 pull. Ooh. Good way to build some muscles. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Really pulling, and I can I can feel it slipping under my hand, and my slack line was getting tighter and tighter. So I'm gonna wrap it a couple more times and pull it again. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Are you done already? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I have a few more. I need to uh, add some sinew to my. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm. I might not make it to the end. I might have to add some more to mine as well. well so go, I mean, go ahead. If you need to add more to your puller, that's good. If you can show people how it works. Yeah. Kind of waxy, so you don't have to uh, like make a knot or anything. And just wrap it over, you know, wrap over it a couple times. And uh, I have my cordless uh, screwdriver here. Cordless good. Yeah, we're super windy here, too. I'm in the Columbia River Gorge, and they've actually forecasted that we might get a little bit of snow. I don't think it's going to be anything major, but, yeah, the, it's blowing like crazy outside. Great California, and I'm up in Oregon, so we're, we kind of have similar weather, weather patterns. Yep. How did you make your drill go silent? That was crazy. Okay. 
<laughs> How did you do that? Oh, that was, ooh, look at that, you guys. I don't know if you can see it, but I like flat sinew, and right there, like, that is the best piece of flat sinew I've ever seen in all of my tie-dyeing. It is so flat. I love that, because that's going to create that nice, thick, wide, white, wide, white line. It never does yeah. that. That was awesome. Okay. Oh, I'm starting to sweat. Pulling on this sinew is making me hot. Workout. Yeah, for real. Okay. I always said, hang out with me for a little while and you'll lose, you'll lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows. Yeah, that will work for me. I know I could stand to lose lots of pounds. Lots and lots of pounds. Okay. Oh. All right. Don't break. Don't break. But you see how quick? I mean, he's right back into action, you guys. He just wound his, his polar up like that quick. There's no sitting around, hand winding. You just you just go. Um, the the city polar and matching caddy set are is a complete game changer for real. Uh, and again, you can there's a link down below. Find find the sinew polar link. Uh, but I'll say it again, it's www boredomwithjen.com um, and you can find she makes all of our tie dyeing tools like these um, these pleating tools boy oh boy do they come in handy plus she also makes tie dye and other cute little things <laughs> many of you have, I'm sure have seen them um, and I'm not going to elaborate on what they are, but they're super cute. So I also need to refill uh, my sinew puller. I just ran out. So I'm going to do it real quick. So I've got my cordless drill here. I don't, I don't do like, I don't work in slip knots like Scott does. So all I do is I just take it. I wrap it around just a couple of times just to get it on there. And then I, it has a, like a drill bit hole on both sides and I just put it down in there and then, um, and then I go watch. Oh, my sinew just broke. Has nothing to do with anything other than how they wound it. Uh, they didn't give me a full, like a full continuous string. Well, anyways, that's enough to finish this project. But you see how quickly I just did that. I'm done and I'm ready to move right back into my work. I don't know if any of you guys are like me, but like if I like have to walk away and like go do something and try to come back, I lose my mojo. My rhythm gets lost. I'm still in my same, my same mental state, my same rhythm, my same tension, all of that. I didn't have to, you know, go sit and wind a sinew puller by hand for a couple of hours. So I, I couldn't, I cannot express enough how important and awesome these tools are. Okay. So I, this is my, this is my last sinew wrap here. <clears throat> And then, did you by chance happen to say like what colors you're using on yours? I don't. I know. never really gave it any thought. Too much. Yeah, I mentioned mine, and I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know what to do. Timberwolf, Wedgwood Blue, Black Cherry is one option I went with, kind of like playing it safe. Those colors split. You know, subtly, and then, I, then a, for a brighter version, I uh, pulled blue, violet, raspberry, and spicy plum, which could be rather. I love blue violet. It's one of. It's <sighs> uh, so nice looking, man. Okay. I like blue All right, now. 
I'm done. Looks like Scott's done. Okay. Now, um, whew, it is so hot in here. I am burning up. Um, okay. So, uh, rack dyeing. I'm going to go grab a t-shirt really quick. I'll be right back. So, uh, snow dies. Uh, okay. Oh, so, oh, there it is. I knew, I was like, I knew I had a t-shirt. I'm just, I'm going to quickly spiral up a twofer. Um, if you guys are new to my channel, I am obsessed with making twofers right now. I know that there's going to be some muck water involved in this project. And so I want to utilize it and just see what the heck happens. So I'm just going to quickly spiral up a shirt. And this is a Port & Company ladies size small. Um, they're, they're really nice shirts. Um, the diamond that I did last week was also a port and company long sleeve and they're really thick. You guys, I don't think, I think they take the dye completely different than the Gildans do. I think had I done that, um, uh, crazy looking X pattern on a Gildan, I think it would have looked a lot better. Honestly, I think certain fabrics don't allow for the flows and and all that good jazz. And I want, I want the black lines to be on the front of the shirt. So I'm actually going to flip this one over and, um, it's going to go face down in the gutter, um, because I want all of the, the muck lines to be on the front. I don't, you know, when I'm wearing a shirt, I can't see what's going on in the back. So I want all the good detail to be on the front. That's one thing, Greg. I don't know, Greg, are you here? Because that's one thing I want to talk to you about. You've been lately talking a lot about how you prefer to flip your shirt over and add your dye to the flat side. Cool. I get it. But you have to take into consideration, what is your flat side? Is the flat side the back of your shirt or the front of your shirt? You always want the front of your shirt, for all of you, to be your prettiest part, right? So, you know, when somebody's wearing your work, when they walk and look in the mirror at themselves, you want it to be the, the best, the brightest on the front. So, yeah, flipping it over and having, placing the die in the back is a good idea where it's nice and flat and smooth. But then, Greg, you need to start out with your shirt face down. Um, just something, something for you to think about. Chew on that for a minute, everybody. Okay. So, quick and easy. I'm done. I'm not going to make this into a masterpiece spiral. Just something something to toss down in there. While well, Scott picks out his colors. So you guys, you tell me what do you would what, what would you prefer? Do you want me to go with the black cherry timberwolf and wedgewood blue or do you want me to go with the crazy bright combination of raspberry, blue violet and um, spicy plum? I'll do either or. I don't know if that's the right choice on either, but that's what I'm willing to do today. Huh? Combo number two. The spicy plum and raspberry, the bright one? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's one vote for the bright shirt. Because I, I know raspberry splits into turquoise, and then uh, the blue-violet also is like a purple-blue, which also splits into turquoise. And then uh, spicy plum is magenta-purple that splits into green. So, I mean, that has potential to be very bright, colorful, fun, funky you know, just loud and obnoxious and kind of like my personality. Okay. Have you decided on what you're doing yet, Scott? 
case anybody wants to copy you and do what you're doing. My go-to color with these. Uh, so your go-to color is wasabi. Okay. Wasabi, wasabi is pretty. Wasabi is I haven't done a single color ice dye in it yet, but I've seen a lot of you do it. And wasabi is a really pretty green that also splits down into a really lovely kind of like uh, light, blue, like a almost like a robin's egg, light turquoise type blue. Yeah. Right. And then that green gets stuck underneath this new. So that Sanu, those Sanu lines are green instead which, of white. Yeah. Which, which is super pretty. I mean, I do like it when uh, dye creeps up, up underneath the Sanu lines. Not always. I mean, there are times where like on my hearts, I want my line to be white, but on other types of projects like geodes, you know, when it gets up underneath that Sanu line, it's actually kind of really beautiful. Like I, I'm not mad at it when that happens. Okay. So what I find thought, Steph. let me see what you got. <laughs> yeah. It's about time, girlfriend. <laughs> Finally. Oh. I even considered pulling Imperial Purple and doing uh, some of that on here. Cause Imperial Purple is gorgeous. It's a nice dark, uh, you know, rich purple, but it splits into gorgeous navy tones, which, you know, I love. But yeah, I'm using it. I just had to show that I got it. So now if I say it, I actually have it. No, I'm, I'm happy for you. Yay. <laughs> okay. So, all right. I'm done. Now, okay. So adding the dye, I'm going to do it. Okay. How are you processing yours? In a gutter? Is that, am I correct? Is, is Scott still here? Okay. What's that? Oh, I, I was taught, I didn't, I, I thought maybe you left. Okay. No, uh-uh, no. Um, You're, are I'm you going to, to be processing in a gutter? I'm going to process it in a gutter, yes. Okay, I'm going to, because I'm I'm trying to grab my supplies, so I'm, I, I want to know what I need to grab. So a gutter, a tote. All right, I'm doing it. Let's see. Huh. Okay, We're so I, I, uh, we've all been uh, hearing the term McDiver. Oh, yeah, McDiver. I'm straight McDiver in these glitches because I do it in a gutter system, but I keep my gutter level. So it kind of mucks, sits in the muck for just a little bit, but it, it does drain out of both ends. So you have to have um something to collect your muck water on both ends if you do it my way you can always uh rack uh do it on the rack which is just fine i i was doing them in an over the sink strainer if you can get them. my yeah mine let me see mine is i think mine's just I, well i mean i i could incline it in the gutter uh, I mean, in the, um, but mine, mine's too long for the over the sink strainer. I've got to run to the back of the house. Um, I had, I was bleaching out my gutters. I gotta, I gotta run and get one. So keep explaining what you're doing. I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm going to use. So reason being. I like wasabi because it goes underneath the sinew and creates green lines instead of white lines. Um, the dusty rose and the blue violet are complete opposite. All these colors are complete opposite of each other, which is what I want. And um, whenever it hits in these panels, when these colors get in these panels, these square panels, they're going to be splitting. So not all the the panels aren't going to be a solid color. They're going to be all split into whatever that that color does. So I like to use colors and makes it look really like uh, 
if you can if you have colors that split grab two colors that don't really go together like wasabi like i'm using wasabi dusty rose blue I've wasabi um store uh, strawberry skies and um dusty purple you know or you yeah, just Well, see, that's just it. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying and all of my colors actually kind of go together. Like blue, violet, and raspberry. I mean, the main colors are contrasting, but they're similar. Like, should I go, like, should I do something different? Like Stormageddon and something else? I mean, what, what should I do? It's all personal. It's really been doing it that way because it makes each color stand out. And it's a like you were saying, calling it a glitch in the matrix. And, you know, it's just all glitchy there for a minute for just a second. And all the colors are broke up and bright and all that. But I've been trying to grab colors that don't even go together. Uh, wasabi, moose strawberry skies or use um Amanda's colors I only have one of Amanda's split, colors or, I don't I don't have well, all I have is strawberry skies from uh happy cat tie dye so I can't I can't um I mean yeah. I want to have the contract I mean I guess spicy plum that's going to be magenta and green and then, but raspberry is magenta and turquoise. I mean, that's not really all that different. Yeah. So. Uh, let's see. Um, let's think of, uh, you have all the Dharma colors. Let's think of. Yeah, I have every, I well, I have every color of Dharma. So like I said, like I've got Stormageddon, which is black with purple and green. Um, let me see. I think I have a Stormageddon. Hockey. No, not happening. I don't care what you guys say or how many times you say it. Never going to happen. Never, ever, 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 ever. So, okay. So, like, here's here is this is Stormageddon, and then this is spicy, spicy plum. So you see, uh, you know, spicy plum's got that magenta with a beautiful green, which I love. And then wow. Stormageddon has the blues. And I also have Stormy, uh, Stormy Sky, which has got the blues and the magentas. Look how pretty yeah. that skirt is. I didn't make a tutorial for this one, but look at how gorgeous that is. It's going to be so beautiful when somebody it's wears beautiful. it. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know. I just want to get some color on this. I just, I need some help. I mean, I've got um, all. I've got all the special order dyes. Like I've got. Uh, I haven't used any of the special order dyes enough to really know what they do, though. You know, like I don't. I don't. I don't even know. Okay, let's see. Spicy plum. Red. Yeah. So, like. Uh, well, I, pu I pulled out He's like studying, Timberwolf. He's studying diet. What, Kelly? No, I ain't trying to help you. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, so Amanda, magenta. Huh? You said you're going to know what my vote is. Yeah, I do love moose. I mean, mo moose is fun. But even more, you know, I love bracken. Bracken to me is so much prettier than moose. I just, something about the orange and the green that comes out of bracken is, uh, yeah. Oh, hi, Jen. I didn't, I didn't know Jen was here. Did you guys know that Jen was here? Um, hi, Jen. Uh, so, Amanda. Uh, Magenta Galactica doesn't split. It's one of my favorite colors, and it's, you know, the color of my hair, but Magenta Galactica doesn't split. So, and hi, Scotty's here. I didn't, 
See, I've been so focused on, I don't even know who is here. Scotty is here. So we've got Jen, Amanda, Lynette, Rihanna. Um, Pops, George. George, Christina, Christy. Um, hi, Christy. Thank you so much for your membership, Christy. I so greatly appreciate it. I don't know if you saw the video where I thanked you or not, but thank you. I see Tom um, and a gray. I did. I used a gray last night and one. Um, it's. Uh, Yeah, see, I don't have that one. I have I have Stormy Gray, but Stormy Gray is not a very good saturator. Yeah, I love your gray. So, I mean, like, part of me is, like, going back to the original Timberwolf, Wedgwood, Wedgwood Blue, and Black Cherry, just because cause they're go. contrasting in color. It's a gray, it's a blue, it's, a, a like, a burgundy, right? And all of them, to me, split in some form or fashion but it's not very dynamic. This is, I see, I overthink it. Now, if I was, if I was alone and I was making this tie dye without an audience, I would just throw colors at it. Cause you guys know I'm not scared of playing with color and I love it. But for some reason when I'm, I'm, I'm not in competition with Scott's dress, but I am, you know, so he, he's going to pick some amazing colors. And then if I go rogue and you know, it's not going to look as cool. Um, but I also want it to look different. I mean, I could literally copy your color, Scott, but then what fun is that, right? None. So let's see. Yeah. Oh, uh, so Rihanna, you, you're, you're doing uh rain dyes. I've never done a rain dye. I've seen Angie do them before and they, they come out cool. The thing that I always wonder about though, is the batching when it's cold outside, like how do you get the vibrancy, you know? Do you bring it in and then hit it with some hot water or put it in an electric blanket or something to bring the temperature up after the uh, the dye dissolves? I've always been curious about that. We get so much rain out here in Oregon. I should be rain dyeing all the time. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know, guys. So, uh, okay. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do mine in my gutter and I, I think Scott is too. But when I add my dye, I'm going to add it down here at the bottom of the tote because I'm going to do my twofer. So I'm going to utilize all the dye that I spill everywhere and um, make my twofer. Now, Scott, let me ask you this. Have you done a... Incline yours. Yeah. Aren't you going to incline yours? Yeah. Yeah, I am. You're not inclining it. Oh. No. Not even a no, little bit? No, that's why I'm saying I, no, I keep it at zero degrees. Oh. And I put I put a container at each end and catch the muck because it's going to drain out on both ends. So it actually is sitting okay. in its own muck for, for a little okay. bit. You know what well, I mean? Well, then I'm I'm not going. I'm going to rack dye mine. So I've got my rack. So I can Which still, be my, perfectly can still be my twofer, though. All I'm going to do yeah. is I'm going yes. to... I'm going to use empty dye jars. You guys, this is really important. They're empty. They're clean. I've washed them in the dishwasher. I've ho you know, I've hosed them out. I've put them through the dishwasher. These are empty dye jars, and they come in super duper handy as a tie dye tool to prop up your racks so that you can get stuff underneath them, or you can um, just get your project from not sitting in the muck. So, okay. All right. Then I need to build an ice barrier though. So what are you, what are you going to do to hold your ice back? Like, what are you utilizing? How are you going to keep your ice cubes on your project? I put my, put my, Oh, okay. And then you have, you have a, a bucket on each side to catch the dripping. Oh, oh, okay. Like you were explaining it to me earlier, but I was, I it was on an incline in my mind. Like this is changing everything. Yeah. No. Okay. 
Okay, so for me, my shirt is too thick to use my silicone cake molds to get a healthy layer of ice. Well, you know why I started doing it in the gutter like that, basically? Because I hate making ice barriers. Yeah, I, I do. I Well, I do too, but I'm not set so up for the other way. So it's easier to put it in the gutter and not worry about it. I, because I have to take my project in the house to batch. Either I can't have buckets and... So I'm I'm going to be McDivering it too. Like I don't have a way to have <laughs> buckets on each side over carpet, and so I'm gonna go grab my foil real quick. I'm switching gears here. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait one second. What if I put it over top? Here we go. No, I still I still need an ice barrier, so that's not gonna work. I'll be right back. Gotta go grab some foil. McDiver scales, have to add more dye later. Your rain dyes are getting hammered. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the hell. I got some new brace. I got a new bracelet. Uh, a couple. Of I'd like to give her give her a shout out. Yeah, do it. Does these, of course, of course, she does these by macro. Ice the thread and um, she goes by Creation Chaos on Instagram and on Facebook. And uh, she will, uh, I invite her to uh, sell some, at least let us know when she's going to do drops and, um, in the selling, the selling group. And uh, Beautiful. She does all kinds of all kinds of really really cool work. Yeah, no, her work is absolutely stunning. Beautiful, gorgeous, um, handmade bracelets. And I I saw them in the I saw I saw her post. She has several posts in the selling group, you guys. And they're reasonably reasonably priced and all of that. And they're you know. They're handmade, they're gorgeous, very talented. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you guys are doing things other than tie-dye, you're more than welcome to, to share it in the selling group. I, my biggest thing is, and you guys know, it just has to be handmade. You know, we're not, it's not a garage sale. It's, you know, it's something that you created. No. If, if you're knitting something or sewing something, you're more than welcome to sell it there. It doesn't have to be tie dye, but you know, I don't want you to sell your old broke down car, or your lawnmower, or, you know, be reasonable. Okay. Art, man. Art. Yeah. And 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 handmade. I I I have had people posting stuff that yeah, I mean, they make it, but they make it with a machine, you know, like uh graphics or whatever. No, that's that's not what the selling group is about. It has to be from your hands, made by you, not a machine. I mean if you do if you use them She's Yeah, she dies her own, she dies the string. Yeah, so I mean it's one hundred percent uh homemade. Man you know, hand Yeah, no, she's awesome. They're beautiful, gorgeous. I don't know if any of you guys are obsessed with Dave Matthews Band, but she does the fire dancer, and yeah, she's yep. she's awesome, super talented. Um, okay, so all right, so you see, it took me no time. I got my foil barrier here. I hate making them too. I don't like to do it, but I, I shifted gears. All right, now what colors do I use? Bye, Layla. Okay. Um, I don't know what to do. I mean, I want it to be cool. I don't want it to be super safe. So, I mean, I guess I could just copy your colors. Um, I don't know. 
All right, but let's get to the dyeing process. So, uh, I don't know what to choose. I've never used Loden before. I don't really know what that looks like. Well, I'm just really, I am su I'm super scared that raspberry and blue violet, the fact that they both break down into toy turquoise, and you know that turquoise dominates projects, period. Like, it will take over if I have two that are splitting into turquoise. Yeah. So... Oh. I do like bracken because bracken is like a dark chocolate brown with pea green and like. Um, okay, so use bracken, um, dusty rose, or uh, what was your, uh, not dusty rose, but what, spicy plum. So use br uh, bracken, spicy plum, and. Um, Bracken, spicy plum, and um, mm. bracken, spicy plum, and blue violet. That's going to be really fucking. Oh. <laughs> That's, That's going to be very fun. It would be nice. Very nice. Uh, okay, bracken. Bracken, Bracken, Bracken is down here. I keep my bra Bracken down with the blacks. Okay, Bracken, Spicy Plum, and what did you say? Blue Violet. Blue Violet. Blue Violet. Whoa. Now, that goes against all of my, you know, whatever, but I'm doing it. Okay, now, so when it comes to adding the dye for these, um... What, how, like, how? How are you, like, what's the pattern you're going to put on them? Right. Yeah. Like that. We're going to rotate at a 45 degree angle and we're going to lay our die at a 45 degree angle to those lines. Okay. We're going to probably about an inch to an inch and a half inch lines and work my way across. So I'll, I'll do wasabi, then dusty rose, then blue violet, and then go back to wasabi, dusty rose, blue violet. Just keep going, working at a 45 degree angle. Um, you can kind of eyeball it. Once you get your angle, um, you can kind of keep that angle, but uh, work your, just work your way across and keep them as wide as you want them really. Um, like I said, I'm hitting them probably about an inch wide. No, so Teresa. It just, Sorry, I'm listening. So it takes me just a minute, but. And you don't have to use three colors. Uh, you can use as many as many as you want, really. I think I might grab, go ahead. I have only used three, so I think I'll go ahead and grab another color. And I'll use, uh, yeah, wasabi. I won't use dusty rose. I'll use spicy plum, too, so. Um, um, Dusty sorry. Rose is really, I, I think Dusty Rose is super pretty. I, Dusty Rose for me is not a heavy saturator. I mean, it's subtle and it's beautiful. Um, one of, one of the roses splits down also into green and looks a lot like, um, spicy plum. Yeah, okay. I have rose wine and. Ooh, I have both of those. Ooh. I am making a woman's dress here. So like, hmm. Okay, I gotta stop second guessing my colors or we're never gonna get through this. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, Um. okay. So what I just heard is we're going to be doing them on like a, a diagonal and, and then what did you say about white space, though? Are we buttoning them up together or we're leaving yeah, that? Yeah, we're going to butt them up together. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Oh, I'm really scared about this color combination, you guys. Like, everything in my body is telling me that bracken, spicy, plum, and blue violet is not supposed to go together. Ever. Like, ever, ever. <laughs> Okay. 
Well, I'm doing it. Oh boy, oh boy. All right. I think okay, well that way I don't have to wipe off. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start then. I'm gonna start with my where put on your protective gear, wear your masks. Uh if you've got a great respirator, put it on. If all you've got is the COVID mask like what I have, just put it on. Okay. All right, and then we're going we're going at a diagonal, and it's a pretty steep diagonal, right? Yeah, it's a pretty steep diagonal. Okay. Okay. You go kind of heavy with your die because it's it's a thick fold, yeah. It's thick, and we added sinew to it, so you want it to uh, saturate as well as you can because that sinew, since we poured it so tight, that's going to be your white spaces. So don't be afraid to add uh, dye to it. And uh, oh, I, I'm afraid. We're, we're not going to flip it. You know what I mean? And that's one thing I like about the way I'm using Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, touche. Well, I mean, God, I, I mean, I could, I could put this in a longer tote, but how would I prop it? Well, oh, okay. Geez, Louise, you want to see me shift gears again, you guys? Watch how my brain is like on fire right now. Let's see, what am I going to do? All right, so I figured it out. If I put it in one of my longest bins, I can put it in my gutter. Forget all that other stuff I did with the foil. Okay, but okay, so I can't, Scott, I can't see you. Are you doing anything? We got that delay. Okay, oh. yeah, you are. Okay, so I did my first line. I that's probably about two inches. So you're doing your your lines about what you, I'm, I walked away to get the gutter about. What'd you say about every inch, inch wide? About an inch, yeah. Okay. And just in a repeating pattern. Well, if I'm gonna do, okay, hold on. If I'm gonna do it here, I wanna make a two for you guys. So if I'm gonna put my die on it, I wanna do it, I wanna do it down in here so I can utilize all that good uh, die. So I'm running out of time. There's going to be a lot of them. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're back to it. So I did my first color was um, Bracken. No. Uh, my first color was Spicy Plum. And now I'm doing Blue Violet. And dye is going to fall off because it's a really weird shape. Yeah. That's where I'm going to utilize my um, my twofer and soak up all that dye that I'm dropping everywhere. Okay. And then I'm going to repeat the process. And now I'm going to hit it with bracken. So I was perusing around. And this was a little while ago, this post. But. Somebody was really scolding somebody because they had all their dye jars open that they were using and took a picture like with a spoon in each uh, project. And they said, oh, you're never supposed to leave your dye jars open because moisture. I call hogwash and I want you guys to quit being mean to each other. Um, while you're working on a project, like right now I'm repeating my process. My dye jars are open and it's fine. When I get done, I'm going to put the lid on tight and go, they're going to go right back in into their drawer. But, you know, don't, don't scold each other for your dye methods. You know, that, that kind of stuff annoys me. Okay. Bracken. Yeah. So here, I think my lines might be a little bit thicker than yours. Maybe I should make them skinnier here. Okay. And I'm doing it at the diagonal like you are. I'm looking at you, but mine are definitely wider than yours. 
So you guys, for those of you that maybe are not tying along, but we'll, we'll do this later or tomorrow or whatever. When you go to post in the group, will you please tag me? I don't have a lot of time to spend on social media looking at everything. So if you tag me, I'm going to have a better chance of being able to see your work, which I want. I want to see your work. So please put put my name. If you want me to see your work, please tag me. Tag Scott too. To tag um, Rad Dyes or uh, Kelly, you know, tag us so that we're able to see what's going on. Okay. And then if you're just joining in, like I said earlier, if you've got a YouTube channel or an Instagram or a Facebook or whatever, I don't know it. You, you got to let me know because I will support you back. But you got you have to tell me. Send me a private message if you have to. Um, if you support me, I will support you back. No problem. Same with Scott. And me too. Me too. Yeah. You know, um, Scott is just starting out his Instagram because I was going through earlier today. Like I think Teresa recently, I didn't know you had an Instagram page. I, I had no idea. Um, I don't know how I stumbled upon you, but of course I'm going to follow you. So, you know, let me know. And just by the way, no, that I, I said fun. That's what I said. I said fun. I don't talk like that. <laughs> Actually, though, we really do. Okay. We have all kinds of fun. All right. And I'm just doing the repeating pattern. And I'm overlapping it a little, just a little bit. And I'm also making sure that I'm going over the sinew line. Um, because if it creeps up underneath the sinew line, Scott says that's okay. So, heck yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going right over top. I think this is going to turn out pretty good. I have no idea. I have never put these colors together at the same time. So uh, it should be interesting. That's why I like doing <laughs> these lives. I like doing these lives because it forces me out of my, you know, like, mono. I like to do everything monochromatic. Like, if I'm going to make a purple shirt, I like to choose you know, complimentary colors and keep everything real safe. You know, this is, this is forcing me to uh, just challenge myself and go a little crazy and we'll see what happens. Okay. And let's see. And then we're going to finish off with the bracken down here. So in theory, this bracken, you know, it splits down into a like a pea green and orange. And, you know, that's going to be interesting against the turquoise. And, uh, and then the spicy plum is a strong magenta with a really pretty sort of like emerald green. So it, if everything works out, it should be rather exciting. Okay. So I feel like I've got my dye on it. Scott is really making his look so much better than mine. Um, mine is mine is sloppy compared to his. But so what he said is he's going to put his in a gutter. So I'm going to carefully pick mine up and set it down in my gutter. And I'm going to set it off to the side. And my TV turned off. I need to go turn the TV back on for Grandma. All right, so 
I've got all this dye, right? You guys know that I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to just, I'm going to make it like, I'm going to combine all the colors together because if you guys are familiar with how to like make colors, if you mix every color in the crayon box together, in theory, it makes black, right? So I'm just going to mix all these up together so it makes a nice dark color so I don't have too much all in one place. And then, I don't know, you guys, should I do a twofer where I put the, the cake molds around it and add its own kind of batch it at the same time? Or I don't know what, what I should do. I'm just so obsessed with making these right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to set the spoon over here and I'm going to smash my twofer down in there and I'm going to soak up all that good dye so it doesn't go to waste. I'm going to smear it on in there. Good. Now let's see what does it look like on the back. Oh, it's not too bad. Okay. So I got it all down in there. Now I could try to help this shirt along and put, like, I think I'm gonna, I'm, why not? Let's go for it. I got the dye jars open. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do like a thin little stripe, quick and easy, making my dyes kind of go down through the center. And, um, you know, let, let's just see what happens. Nothing fancy. Just like making pieces of the pie. I don't know what color. I think that's a spicy plum that I have in my hand right now. Yep, yeah, it was. And then I'm going to just do another line of bracken. Just quick and easy. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Whatever. Ooh, bracken's a clumpy dye. It doesn't want to spread around too much. Yeah, it's pretty. It's like that dense, like it's all like baby powder, like just heavy. Um... I, I like the dyes that sprinkle. Those are the ones that I like. Okay. Me too. Okay, I think that's good enough for me. I'm not going to go too fancy. Make sure that you put the right lid on the right jar. That way when you go to pull it out, you know that you're doing it the right way. Uh, I like the green. I might just make this one just a little bit wider because I like it. Um. Spicy Plum is like currently one of my absolute favorite colors. Okay, doing it, doing it. Okay. All right, I can already see the blue violet starting to break down into its turquoise. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rack over top and I'm going to, I'm going to batch my project on a rack. I mean, I'm going to bat, I'm going to set the rack down and then I'm going to put the gutter on top of the rack. So I'm going to get my little, um, my containers. I'm going to try to do it just like how Scott is doing it. I'm going to try to do it like how Scott is doing it, but without having to have, um, buckets over top of my carpet. Right. So I'm going to, Put it here like this, and then I'm going to take, where'd my gutter? Here it is. And I'm going to set my gutter up on top of the rack, and then all of my muck water can just do what it needs to do off to the side, and it can fall down in my tote. What do you think, Scott? Does that look like a good setup? I don't think Scott's here. I think he must be off getting his um, ice. I don't think he heard me. Oh, I thought we could start up. So yeah, I think that. Oh, I thought we could hear each other in real time, but okay. Yeah, I I I know. I can tell when he ignores me. Look, I look, I I know when men ignore women. They're like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. 
I think in theory, this is similar to what you got going on. It's just, instead of having two buckets on the side, mine's going to catch yeah. in the tote and I can keep my house clean. So for those of you that don't have a, like if you, if you guys die, like I do, where you try to, you know, you don't have like a designate designated dye batching area, like a Scott and Kelly have, I think this could be an alternative. I think, I mean, does this in theory look like what you're doing? It's in a gutter. It's raised yeah, up. Yeah, because you, uh, of it and then just put a container on either end and let it drain right into it no problem yeah so you're you're raising yours up as well the only difference is is you're gonna yeah you're gonna have what like a five gallon bucket on each end of your gutter right or something like that yeah they're just little um little pans that uh you use for buffet like little oh, buffet yeah. pans so any it does it, like a drip pan doesn't matter what specifically yeah, just a little drip pan on either side and let it drip in that way mine's kind of sitting in the muck a little bit instead of draining right through did you do your quick little sprinkle of soda ash already oh yeah i did that and on the side of my gutter. Okay, I'm doing it right. So I got it. I'm doing both of mine. I did uh, my twofer just got its little shot. Yeah. All right, all right. And then, uh, how about um, are you doing any of the uh, globber salt? Are you doing globber salt on yours doing, at all? Are you doing salt? Okay, I'm going to go grab my ice, too, then. Okay. I just spilled ice everywhere, everywhere. Okay. So I don't know, part of me wants to put, I don't know, part of me really wants to put a, a, a cake mold around. I'm, I'm going to do it because I want to do it. I, I want to have a little bit of control over my twofer. I want to take full advantage of that muck water, but I also want to keep control of this project. So what I'm going to do is take my cake molds. Would you guys see me use the cake molds all the time? And I'm going to build myself an ice barrier to go around the project. And I'm going to actually add a little bit of ice to the project down below just to kind of help it go. And then, I mean, really what I want to do is I want to utilize the muck water. I want it to soak it up and get those black lines. Um, instead of instead of pouring the muck water down the drain. So I, it's kind of a twofer and it's kind of not because I am manipulating the process. But see, I'm just gonna wrap my cake mold around it quick and easy and I take just a dollar store paper clip and I paper clip it shut. And then I'm gonna just put a little bit of ice down here on this project to get it started. So let's see what color, let's see how, if we can see any anything fun happening okay yeah so um right out of the gate uh my uh um bracken looks really black or is that the spicy plum or the spice one of them is looking actually just straight black i don't remember which is which I think that might uh, be probably, bracken. yeah, probably the black, the bracken, because I know it's kind of brownish. So it'll be interesting to see. So I'm just gonna do that to get the the uh, dye moving on this. Now I'm gonna bring my gutter back up, or let's see, where's my rack? And put my rack back down. 
And if you look in the description box, you guys, everything that I use is down in the description box. So everything that you see me using right now, except for like stuff from the dollar store, you can you can get right right from looking at my description box. Okay, so here we go. Oh, all right. Um, I feel like I I feel like also what I want to do because I th this is new to me. I've never used a gutter for a flat project before. So I'm gonna take um, a couple of my cake molds and some clothes pins and I'm gonna build like an ice dam. That way I don't have to fill the entire gutter up with ice. This, this is just gonna allow me to just isolate the ice right around the project and save, um, just save on energy and ice and water and free on. And, and then that, Add a washcloth at each end. Yeah. Yeah, utilizing utilizing a dye towel is is a good idea as well. Oh, I think actually I think this color combination might look really pretty. It's got a really br pretty bright <laughs> blue right now. And um, the spicy plum isn't really showing itself too much, but uh, so here's the, um, the blue violet, and then this is the bracken, and then the spicy plum. The spicy plum was the one that looked black, and it's not, but it's it, right now it's a real dark color, but I think that's gonna be a really pretty, it better turn out or I'm blaming you forever. No, I'm no, I'm just kidding. And then I'm just gonna make sure that it's all filled up here. And oh, I have so much fun. This is my favorite part. Just I'm gonna get all my ice on there. All right. There. I love it. I'm so excited. Hopefully this is going to be a good redemption. And I liked my last rainbow shirt, you guys, but it didn't have, you know, it, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't 100% like a glitch, but it, it was still good. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping this time to have a little more contrast and, and all that cool stuff. So let's see, I, as I'm cleaning up here, I'm going to just kind of look. I know you guys are all talking. I just want to see if I see any. Is there? Does anybody have any questions from what we're where we're gonna go from here? Well, I'll just tell you. I'm gonna take this into the house where it's 70 degrees or higher, and I'm gonna let this batch for 48 hours from the time that the ice melts. So, like this ice might take a few hours. Um, so let's see. What is today? Today is Tuesday. So my schedule just works. I won't be rinsing this until Friday morning. So I don't really watch the clock. I just know Friday, you know, not like five o'clock in the morning, but like Friday at some time I'm going to rinse this out. So that's how I do it. I think Definitely. I, I think taking notes, taking pictures, documentation, writing down what colors did you use? What kind of fold was it? You know, it, it really does help in the long run, because if you do something magnificent and you didn't document it in any way, then you're like, well, what the heck did I do? How did I do that? So, well, you're just you, around, then. you know, you take some pictures it, it helps. And, and so I agree. So let's see. Uh, Terry will. Okay. So will we check in between the folds? 
if they are really thick. Scott, I don't, so this is my second time, so I don't know. Scott, do you peek inside your folds? Are you going to? No, I don't. No, I add a bunch of, um, I add a bunch of ice because, you know, like, like we were saying a couple ice usually because right layer of ice okay uh, i use uh, so that that very very good very very good point scott very good point so say say it again you i just cut you off you check the bottom. You look at the bottom. What you? What did you say? I look at the bottom. Like tomorrow, when my ice melts, I'll look at the bottom and make sure that it's fully saturated. If it's not, then I'll add more ice. And so, because for, we added, we added a bunch of dye. At least I did. I, so I feel like I added quite a bit dye. of dye too. I, I mean, I, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you are cutting out a little bit um, here and there, but I can, I can hear between the lines. Um, so, so, he, so here's the thing for me. So Scott's gutter is two inches taller than mine. So right now he has two, inch, two inches more ice than I do. Almost always with my two inch gutters that I got from Lowe's, once this first layer is pretty well um, melted, I almost usually always come and put a second layer on because I have quite a bit of undissolved dye. Now, once I do that, Scott and I are kind of on the same uh, playing level as far as ice amount goes. And like he just said, when he, when he peeks on it, if the back has good saturation, He's going to set it and forget it. Um, you know, if if there's a bunch of undissolved dye, saturation is poor on the back, he might add more ice. Or in the rare, very rare occasion, if there's, if you know, that second layer of ice is not pushing the dye through, then we'll flip it and we'll add more dye. I take every single project as it comes. I do whatever I need to do project by project. Wouldn't you say you do the same, Scott? I do. Yeah. But I also, but I also, uh, being an ice dye, tiny bit of dye on top of that ice cube just to get my saturation but yes i do i do the same thing you know i mean i i uh i check my i check my, the bottom of my uh, project for saturation every as soon as my ice melts that way i that's when you want to uh if you need to not really fix a mistake per se but more like you know uh you know how like we check it after our ice melts the next morning and then sometimes we'll have like where we'll add more ice. Yeah. Sometimes I do that every I do that every project. Every project I treat as its own separate entity. And like he just said, if there if like one of my little tag like one of my little flaps of fabric over here has no saturation, like he just said, I might take one ice cube out of my ice cube tray. Or just take a little a little pile of my nugget eyes, put it right there, and dab a little of that color, and like let it do its thing. So I don't. I mean, right now I'm going to set it and forget it, and then and then adjust from there. And so that that he just brought up a really good point. If both he and I wake up in the morning and look at our projects, and there's nothing like saturation. We'll do what is called uh, after the ice melts, where we, you know, flip it or make major changes to the project. 
if we if we're not back tomorrow, you know, or before noon, then you can assume we've said it and forget it. Maybe have tweaked here and there as needed, but but we both feel comfortable with the saturation as is. So that's my biggest piece of advice. You really have to just treat each project as it comes um, with ice dyeing. You know, uh, a lot of times, most of the, like I would say probably eight out of 10 times, I do not flip a project. Number one reason is I'm extremely lazy. Like once I get this in there, I'm over it. I'm excited to do something new. Also, because I'm trying to learn with each project, what each color color is capable of, you know, if, if I do it this, you know, like if I leave it alone, how will it look? And then next time I will know, like I should have flipped it. So if I over manipulate from this point, this is my shirt number two, totally different with the sinew. If I over manipulate it right now, I will never know if it was right right out of the gate or did I manipulate it into something different? So that's right. my approach. I try to learn from everything I do. So. Me too. <sighs> so here's one that I did. Um, when, so it'll be ready Wednesday night. Um, this is one I did last night with noose, blue, violet, and wasabi. I, hey, I just and, real quick, real quick. I want you to know Kristen is here, your bracelet maker. She's, oh. she's saying thank you. So I just wanted to let oh, you know. No so, um, hi, Kristen. I love your bracelets. I saw them in our selling group and you're amazing. <laughs> you have an, a, a, an incredible talent. I, I was telling Scott earlier that I used to make friendship bracelets in the sixth grade, you know, where we, uh, what is that string? You tie the little knots. Nothing like what you're making. Like your, your stuff is incredible. So thank you for posting and uh, and sharing those. And I hope you get a ton of sales. Okay. So sorry, Scott. Go back to explaining what you were doing. No, no. No, absolutely. But uh, this is one I did last night. I used moose, blue, violet, wasabi. Um, wrote on it. Uh, it's a 2X dress glitch um, that it'll be ready Wednesday night. And... Um, Looking at the bottom of it, my saturation looks perfect. I'm, so, I'm, are um, you showing the back? Because I got that 20 second delay. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it here in just a okay. second. But you'll see the color, you'll see the splitting colors. Okay. And it that's going through it. And uh, so it's like perfect saturation. Um, okay, here it comes. So, yeah. All right. So, this, this is a saturation, you guys, that we are looking for. Pay attention. When you see that much depth and richness in a color, you know you're going to be okay for the most right. part. And this is just a tag. This is, you know, that little inside seam tag. That's what that little white right there is. But uh, okay. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to get good saturation on that. Yeah, and any white looks... that's left will be because of my Sanu. No, it, it looks incredible. So, so here's, so this is a really good example right here and pay attention. Now, if he was to flip that over and it still looked like a plain white t-shirt, two things need to happen. You either need to do another round of ice and then check it after that, or you just need to flip it and reapply your dye in the same, we don't have to, you can apply it any way you want, but if it was me, right. I would reapply it in the same pattern that I just did. That looks sure. like excellent saturation and that, so tomorrow in the morning after my ice, I'm, I'm almost positive I'm going to do a second layer of ice. So after that, tomorrow morning, that is a saturation that I'm going to be looking for. Full saturation. If you've got that, you're going to, you're going to be okay. So keep that in mind. Who sells Moose? And you can Moose see is, Moose and Timberwolf are, it's Dharma Trading Company. Moose is a special order die from Dharma Trading Company where you have to order five pounds or more. We don't do that here. What we do is we go to Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace on Facebook. And I do have a link down below in the description box. And right now, Kathy Greger, she's fully stocked, ready to go to where you can buy four ounces 
and up. You can buy as much, uh, order as, as much as you want. Um, like here, for instance, um, this is not from Kathy Greger, but this is what it will look like. Like this, oh, uh, here's a Dharma jar. You know, this is how they package it. When you order from Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace, you'll get something that looks similar to this. Uh, but both both are Dharma dyes. Uh, the Crafty oh, Cuban, you. the Crafty Cuban wants to know um, if she can call dibs on your dress right now. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I think I could be wrong, but I think this dress might have been for an order you were already making. Is it, it, uh, yeah, I had four dresses to do, but believe me. Uh, no, the one you're making tonight isn't. The one I'm making tonight is uh, totally available. It's a small medium. Right now. Oh. to make the address or a shirt or whatever you want. You're welcome, Sue. And yeah, so so we, we need to wrap it up. I, I I have got to get going. We have a birthday party that we're having, so I've got to get cleaned up. Um, Scott, why don't you tell people how that they can find you? Uh, Scott is more than happy to um, make you things. Now, obviously, you know, don't be a jerk and be like, I want this color that, you know, if you want a glitch, he'll make you a glitch. Tell him your basic color scheme that you'd like, but, you know, let him be an artist. But, you know, he's yep. more than happy to to make you something. And, and he's really good at uh, working under pressure, which I am not. So, yeah, so I actually prefer kind of prefer it i seem to do oh. my best work. not me right. no way no how so tell everybody where they can find you if they don't know already uh you can find me uh on facebook under rad dies um r-a-d uh rad dies um rad dies wv on instagram um uh scott rad dies walker on facebook Good night, Amanda. Thank you for tuning in, hon. Yeah. So if you see, like he has things available on his Facebook. If you see it and it's available, you can buy it. Go for it. But if you see something and you love it, you say like, I love that. And he can kind of reproduce it. Now, you know, no two things are ever exactly 100% the same, but he can he can do what he did and, and get close, you know? So, you know, yeah. you got to always Sometimes keep that it's in mind. Better. A lot of times it's better because I'm, a, I, you know, you only get better. So that's lot, true. A that's a, that's a good point. That is a better. very, very good point. So, um, you know, they've got stuff for sale, right? You, I mean, you have, you have a little bit of surplus on your, on uh, Facebook, don't you? Or is everything yeah. already sold? No, I got, I actually have, I was going to do a pop-up and I th actually thought about doing a um, past weekend, but it was really windy and I didn't want to deal with that. Yeah, so, no, I mean, right. I think I might. Oh, but, but yeah, no, come spring. I mean, Greg makes tons of sales just by posting up in his front yard and people drive by and yeah. they pull I over really and, think about doing and that. you know, they pull yeah. over and buy his stuff. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with yeah. doing that at all yeah. you know awesome. if you i know you're busy but if you have time it, it might be maybe it's been a while but you know maybe like do a little uh like a vignette of you know things you might have available currently so people can take a look and instead of having to like scroll through your entire page they can just you know you can be like i have these five shirts available right now and when they're gone they're gone kind of a thing so all right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm going to dip on out of here you guys. I want to say thank you so much to everybody that tuned in. Thank you so much Scott for like walking us through this and giving us um uh, an even in in more depth um training on this glitch. I hope everything turns out and Kelly, thank you for tuning in and being there to um you know, if major questions were coming through, I know uh 
we need you there. So I appreciate yeah, that. We're, we're pretty quiet tonight with the question. So I was kind well, of useless. No, you're, you're, <laughs> you're not useless. I think everybody, I was even more quiet than I normally am. I think everybody was really just soaking up every bit of knowledge because we're all, you know, we want to get better at this and, and, you know, we just want to get it right. So, um, so thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. And for everybody that tuned in tonight, thank you so much. Like I said before, please tag uh, myself, tag Scott, tag, you know, tag Kelly, Brad Dyes, whatever. So that way when you post, we can see your version. Cause I'm, you know, I'm excited to see. And I just want to say this uh, as we close, I've really been noticing you guys that all of your dyes are looking so much better and even mine are starting to look better. And we all have Scott for his pleading mask, you know, like you're a master pleader. You really are. You have the patience of Job and, you know, thank well, you. you. I've, well, I've seen my, prog I've seen a lot of progression in my work. That's awesome. So, I mean, we're yeah. all getting better. We're, we're coming together as a community. We're teaching each other and I'm loving it because seriously, no, like go yo, huh? I mean, just your last three videos, Greg, your work is like, I don't even like, I, I don't know what happened to you, but new year, new Greg, like your stuff That's right. overnight has become so much better. So all of you, you're doing awesome. I'm super proud of you and I'm excited to see your work, but I don't have the time to be on social media like I would like to. So please tag me, message me something. Let me know that you're out there and I will, you know, I will give the support. So, and yes, Teresa, thank you. Please do not forget to give a thumbs up to this video because it tells YouTube land that this is valuable and it, it helps it grow so that more people can learn. So, and then I'll let you have your closing and then uh, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Go for it, Scott. Let it roll. <laughs> A couple times and you'll get it. I revert back to these videos. When people ask me questions, I'm going to start reverting. I'm going to start uh, sending the link of this video to them. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, uh, I, it's a pretty good tutorial and it's live. It's uncut and unedited. So, no, and, uh, I, and I totally agree because you're going to have every time you post one, they're so beautiful. And everybody's going to say, like, how did you do that? You know, just say, like, here, because. I don't think there's anything more you can say in a, a little Facebook message that you haven't just said right here. So, right. Um, right. you know, people can do a little bit of investigation on their own. You know, they can, they can look and, and see mm -hmm. like you've laid it all out there. So fingers and crossed. It's to me too. It really is. I just start doing it uh, whenever you wanted to do the live stream just well, two weeks ago. Yeah. And I remember saying, man, I really. Because I just had orders for them, you know, so. No, you're, you're killing so it. I love doing them. They're so this is, this will not be the last time we do this, but hopefully I'm not going to have to do a massive redemption video. Hopefully this one's going to turn out. And we can move on to something else. I want to revisit the X soon because I'm not so happy with that. I want to leave you guys with something a little more uh, palatable. Yeah, we can but, do those um, and you know, do those songs too. The what? We need the. Uh, we can do a definitely do a redemption with the X, but also do those socks sometime too. Oh yeah. Right, right, right. So yeah. Thigh high stockings and yeah, we need to do a little bit of liquid. I mean, so we need to kind of like go back to the basics and get into some liquid dyeing. Sure. Um, well, I mean, I guess we don't have to do liquid on those, but in, you know, everybody sees them done in liquid and that's what they're going to want to know how to do is like 
how are those done? And they're mostly done with liquid, which I'm not looking forward to liquid at all, but I can do it. I've got all the tools to do it. I just don't want to mix dye. If does that somebody want to come over and mix my liquid dye for me and then I'll liquid dye all day long. <laughs> All right, you guys, I've got to, I've got to get off here. I set my limit at five o'clock and I'm 26 minutes past. I could stand here and talk about tie dye till tomorrow morning. I love it. I love all of you guys. You guys are the best tie dye community friends. Um, I think we're all very supportive of each other and I, I really do appreciate you, all of you. And Scott yeah. and Kelly, thank you for uh, being live with me tonight. Had a ton of fun, like always. So, so if you, sorry, I was gonna. I'm, oh, I do too. That's what I'm saying. Like I could stand here and talk forever. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Uh, the best way to know when we're going to go live is to make sure to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and then that little bell that's off to the right-hand side, you wanna click on that icon and turn it on to all. Go into your device setting, like your iPad, your phone, whatever you're using, and go down into your notifications to YouTube and turn on notifications. Because in the rare event that tomorrow morning we go live after the ice melts, I'm not gonna have any way to notify you guys in time. But if you have all that set up, if we do go live, you'll get a notification and you won't miss it. So that is my biggest advice for this whole, because I've been asked about it quite a bit. Um, I made the, the announcement post and a lot of questions were like, well, how do I know when you're live? Well, the best way is to do that. Turn your bell to all. And the only way to turn it on is if you hit subscribe. So a couple, couple of quick clicks. So... All right, guys. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. We will see you guys. Oh, and oh, oh, God, one more thing I forgot. I put up a poll on uh, YouTube. Um, you know, I'm curious to know what you guys would pr prefer. So you should just see it in your, um, like when you're scrolling through your YouTube, my poll should come up. But if it doesn't, go to my channel, go into the community tab and check out the poll. Because I, I would like your feedback on on the question that I asked. So, okay. All right, you guys you. have a wonderful night. I'm gonna take this into the house, get it batch in, and and uh, and then we'll see you next Tuesday for sh probably for sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, good night, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.